$10,000 for a picture of a ferret. This is the black-footed ferret, and he's extinct. Well, he was. Twice. Black-footed ferrets are North America's only native ferret species. They went extinct the first time because we were trying and failing to wipe out an entirely different animal. Prairie dogs. Prairie dogs are disliked for a lot of reasons. They can carry a lot of diseases, and their burrows are really destructive. <laughs> but they're also fundamentally linked with the black-footed ferret. They're the only food that the black-footed ferret will eat, and their burrows serve as shelter for it. So when we tried to get rid of prairie dogs by poisoning them, we ended up poisoning the ferret, too. Black-footed ferrets were believed to be extinct in the 1950s, until in 1964, a tiny population of black-footed ferrets was found in South Dakota. Researchers quietly watched this population for years until it started to naturally decline. Worried that black-footed ferrets were going to go extinct again, they captured nine, with the hope of establishing a captive breeding program, but none of them made it. So the black-footed ferret was extinct again. Until in 1981, a dog named Shep brought home a black-footed ferret, but it wasn't alive. The hunt was on, and they found them in Wyoming, a very small population of black-footed ferrets. History starts repeating itself again, and that tiny population, which peaked at just over 100 individuals, starts to die off. So they managed to capture 24 ferrets, but six of them don't make it, and so we're left with 18, and the wild population dies out again. But this captive breeding program actually succeeds, and in 1991 we're able to start reintroducing black-footed ferrets into the wild. However, it doesn't end there, because the same diseases that eradicated all those small populations before is still out there. Two extinctions, two diseases. Black-footed ferrets can't catch a break. Those local extinctions in South Dakota and Wyoming were due to canine distemper virus. You've probably heard of CDV if you own a dog, but it's also a naturally occurring virus in lots of carnivores, too. In the wild, the disease is highly lethal, damaging the gastrointestinal tract, respiratory tract, and even the nervous system. It'd be difficult, but researchers were confident they could tackle one well-studied virus. Except it wasn't one virus. You may remember black-footed ferrets exclusively eat prairie dogs. You may also know that prairie dogs are infamous for being hosts for bubonic plague. Bubonic plague isn't caused by a virus, it's caused by a bacteria, Yersinia pestis. In the early days of black-footed ferret conservation, researchers didn't really think twice about bubonic plague. I mean, why would they? The ferrets were adapted to a diet of just prairie dogs, and prairie dogs and black plague have gone hand in hand for decades. On top of that, domestic ferrets are resistant to black plague. So imagine their surprise in 1995 when a colony of captive black-footed ferrets on the verge of being reintroduced is nearly wiped out after dinner. They were so initially shocked that they actually thought it must have been rodenticide, the same thing that wiped out black-footed ferrets to begin with. Testing confirmed it was bubonic plague, likely introduced through the prairie dog chow that they feed the ferrets. Of the 30 ferrets that were exposed, only three lived. It's a big deal, because that means the ferrets are not as resistant to bubonic plague as they initially thought. And almost every reintroduction site has some history with bubonic plague because they all have prairie dogs. We can and do vaccinate the ferrets, but it's a little bit of a different story for the wild ones. If you own a dog, you've probably heard about canine distemper before because your dog gets vaccinated annually for it, which is great. But unfortunately, they can't just take this vaccine and give it to black-footed ferrets. Now, I'm not going to dive too far into the vaccine development because I'm not an immunologist, but I will tell you the interesting part. When you're making a vaccine for black-footed ferrets specifically, at some point you need to test it on black-footed ferrets, but you can't do that if they're endangered. So they found a loophole. These are not black-footed ferrets, these are Siberian polecats, but if you make a hybrid between a Siberian polecat and a black-footed ferret, that's as close as you're gonna get. So through work with these guys, they developed a vaccine that they can give to the captive populations of black-footed ferrets. Plague isn't so simple, so they've developed three different tactics that they use today. Much like canine distemper, there's a vaccine against Yersinia pestis that they give to the captive ferrets, and sometimes wild ones. But it's not 100% effective, so they actually spray insecticide all around the burrows to get rid of fleas. But that one doesn't work so well because the insecticide kills everything, and also it requires a lot of manpower. So more recently, they started vaccinating the prairie dogs. But capturing and giving injectable vaccines to thousands of prairie dogs every year just isn't feasible. Recently, they've started using this, which is an oral vaccine wrapped in peanut butter. Vaccinating the prairie dogs also comes with an additional pro, because you're not just protecting the black-footed ferrets, but you also get to protect the prairie dogs. This ferret's name is Elizabeth Ann, and she's a clone. She's 100% genetically identical to a ferret that died back in the 80s named Willa. Cloning endangered animals can make you feel a lot of different ways, ethically, morally, 
I'm not going to tell you how to feel, I'm just going to tell you the facts. None of today's black-footed ferrets are descendants of Willa. Her genetics were totally lost. Which is a big deal because every ferret that exists today is descended from just seven individuals. Well, except for Elizabeth Ann. Every ferret that's produced in captivity has to go through really rigorous mate selection so that there's no inbreeding and you don't end up with like a Habsburg situation. Captive breeding has worked really well for this species. There's been more than 4,000 ferrets produced through it, and there's more than 350 free living in the wild. So you might be wondering what's the point of cloning if you can already produce ferrets naturally. It all has to do with genetic diversity. The more diversity you have in a population gives that population more wiggle room when crazy things like climate change or disease happen. We don't know exactly what genetic aspect of Elizabeth Ann is different from the regular black-footed ferrets we have today, but let's say it's something simple like fur thickness. Imagine Elizabeth Ann has thin fur. It's not so great in the cold, but it's great in hot weather. And every other ferret has the opposite, thick fur. Now, we can't control the weather, and heat waves happen. A population lacking Elizabeth Ann's thin fur trait might see dramatic declines, whereas one that has it mixed in would see declines that are lessened. Neither trait is better because cold weather happens and hot weather happens. This is all still theoretical though because Elizabeth Ann is still just a clone. She hasn't been bred and her genes haven't reached the general gene pool. They are looking for a mate for her, so we might see the effects of this in maybe a couple decades. 